Welcome to the On Purpose Investor Podcast with your host, Eric and Tiffany Vogel. We've spent several hard years building a rental property portfolio so we can have more time with our family and live our ideal life. Now, finding your path can be difficult, so we're here to guide you along the way with lessons, tips, and tricks to design and implement your dream life. Now, sit back, turn up the volume, smash that follow button, and get ready for this episode of the On Purpose Investor. How's it going, Pathfinders? And welcome back to the On Purpose Investor podcast. I'm your host, Eric. And Tiffany. See, this season, we're bringing in a new component where they can see us, and now they can be like, I wonder what Eric looks like when he goes, Eric! Yeah, you do the arms every time. Eric! All right, I don't think they want to hear you yell your name repeatedly. It's okay. (laughs) Well, anyways, welcome back to the On Purpose Investor Podcast. This is season three, and we're coming at you this season with some, you know, how-tos and how to get started. Uh, I know we have a a great group of listeners out there, and we thank you endlessly for uh, listening to our podcast and, you know, tuning in weekly uh, with us. And this season, we're going to give you all some tips and tricks on, you know, how to get started, Um, you know, just holistically how to get started, how to tune out some of the white noise that comes along with kicking off a, a new endeavor like real estate investing. And, you know, hopefully you've read the book, The Pathfinder's Journey by now, or listened to it on Audible. And uh, you know that Roy in the book is, you know, he's some white noise that Charlie could have easily listened to and let him get to him. And our goal this season is to teach you and to coach you through how to not let people like Roy get to you. Yeah. And we basically started out with a list of the common things that people say or what hold them back from getting started in real estate. So for this episode, we're going to start off with time, but we'll talk about other things that hold people back. I know analysis paralysis, money, um, not knowing how to find a good deal, things like that. So this season, we're really going to dig deep into each topic and hopefully give you some tips to get over those hesitations and get started investing. Right. Today is episode number 25, and we're going to be talking about time. Yep. Tick tock, tick tock. Yeah. People say they, they just don't have enough time to get investing in real estate. My whole thing was, <laughs> and it just came to my head. I was like, who's the one person in all of history who hated the clock ticking? Captain Hook. Do you not remember that? No. Captain Hook hated the clicking of watches okay. and, and clocks. And, you know, he, it like drove him crazy. And I love that, you know, time drove him crazy, not because he couldn't find enough of it, but because the clock ticking reminded him that his life was passing him by. It was like this very deep thing about Captain Hook. He's like, I am mean and I'm scary, but I'm also afraid to get old. And the time was reminding him that he's getting older, but Peter Pan never gets old. He's a child forever, right? Right. That's the idea of Neverland? Is that you? You're a child forever? Hmm. Only if I can find my way to Neverland. Oh, I, uh, never mind. I All right. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's tie right back into the podcast talking yeah. about time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a lot of people say I... I work a job, I have a family, you know, there's all these things going on in my life and I just don't have the time to renovate a house or find a deal or even investing in educating, which you're here, you're listening to this podcast, so you are investing in, in some time into educating. Right. Um, so I guess the way I would counter that is we all have the same number of hours in a day. Very we true. all get 24 hours and how we use it is up to us. And, you know, we. We talk about at the end of each episode, don't let the time you just invested go to waste. You want to make sure you're investing your time in things that help you reach your goals, not spending it on things that are are detracting from your your dream life. So I agree with that. For us, I mean, time has shifted a lot. When we first got started in real estate, we were limited on time in that we had our jobs, but then we had our first son, and then we realized... Oh, wow. We had a lot of time back then, at least freedom to move about, you know? Yeah. We had more control over our time. We were fairly restricted, though, because we did have to be at work. Right. And it was it was easy to say, I have to go to work from, you know, 6 a.m. until 4 p.m. every day. 
and 4 p.m. till sleep is my time. No, that's my time. But we said for those three years of getting started, we said those, you know, remaining six hours, that is where we focus. Yeah, but for a while it was you were working till 8. So you were working 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Right, and then 8 p.m. till 1, 2 a.m., that was the time to focus. Right, on the rentals. And the last thing anybody wants to do after working a long, hard day of, of, you know, being tied to the W-2 is to go work on something else. And we talked about this on past episodes, you know, all of that work for, what, 200 bucks a month? Right. But it snowballed. Right, right. Quickly. Right. And you got to think, you know, that one project was $200 a month, but that one project is going to snowball into another one that's $200 a month, and then another right. one, and then another one, and then that $200 a month becomes $600 a month. Yeah. Um, so getting your mind around the fact that, you know, it's all of this extra work during this small period of time that I could be focusing on other things, like watching TV or um, going to dinner or right. hanging out with friends and family. We had to say bye to that. Right. We had to say goodbye and, and, and cut all that off. Yeah. And even as we've been building, not a rental portfolio, but this, this business helping other people, our time has had to shift because now we have a child. And as we're recording this, I am six months pregnant. So we know time is going to be very condensed coming this fall once our, right. our second's here. But we're planning. So we're, we're planning to record a couple seasons of the podcast now because we have the time Mm -hmm. and we know that come this fall and winter time is going to be very scarce for us. So we're leveraging the time we have now so that in the future we can take time off to be focused on our family. Yeah. And we, we had to learn how to work a condensed schedule. I mean, nap time is two hours pretty much to the minute. So we know in those two hours, we've got to get the one thing done. And we, we talk about the One Thing book a lot. We have a great podcast also. Just picking the 80% or the 20% tasks that drive 80% of the results. Right. That's where the impact really is. Mm-hmm. So we had to cut out a lot of the things that were keeping us busy, but not helping us reach our goals. Right. And I know we have in here, you know, we all get the same hours in the day. Right. Um, what you do with them is what's going to determine what your success looks like. Yeah. You know, if you use those remaining six hours of your day to watch TV, to go out to dinner, to spend time with family and friends, do you think those people are going to reach another level of success? And, you know, today we had a meeting with a young man who's looking to, you know, build his rental portfolio and and getting into the game. And, you know, meeting with him and you know, he's like, oh, I do have a job, but I, I see that y'all want some help. Um, he did not hesitate to say, oh, I will do that. Right. You know, his remaining six hours of his day are now going to be, you know, not every day, but some days he's going to be dedicated to pursuing working with us. Right. Not only to, to get some percentage of the, the profits, but to also learn. Right. And to get into the game and, and immerse himself so that he, too, can one day chase his goals and, and live his dream life. Right. And when we were starting, I had downtime in between meetings where I didn't have other work that I needed to work on. And I had 20 minutes. So I would go find a property and analyze it. And that 20 minutes, it's a short amount of time. But the value of analyzing that property could determine whether we got that deal or not. Oh, right. Absolutely. So using every spare moment, we avoided social media and just our one thing was investing in real estate. And so, I know we did this without children, but that changes things. Right. So you have to find what works for you, but look at your time with almost like a, an overhead view. Mm-hmm. And see, where are you really spending your time? Because there's, there's probably some time you could give up other things. You could chisel away front-end, back-end time of different events, different right. things that you do to weave in, you know, running numbers on a deal or searching Zillow or Redfin or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace right. for deals. Yeah. Or 
you know, going to different real estate meetups or listening to different podcasts or reading books. There's there's five and ten minutes here and there throughout your day that I, I guarantee you, if you track your time, you'll be like, wow, there's two hours within right. my work day that I could do this. Right. Not to include the extra four to six hours on the back end of your work day. Right, and your commute time to work. You can listen to audiobooks or podcasts. There's mm-hmm. ways to fill the time. No, with absolutely. Things that'll help you reach your goals. And one, I mean, one strategy is figuring out your hourly rate. And Vicki Robbins and Joe Dominguez talk about this in Your Money or Your Life. What is your hourly rate for your life energy? And once you have that calculated, then you can work to outsource things that are lower cost. Mm-hmm. So if your hourly rate is $10 an hour, but you are doing things around the house that you can outsource to someone for $5 an hour, you should consider doing that. So then Absolutely. you can focus on finding things that add more value. Mm-hmm. And I mean, going back to what you were talking about with your phone and how you might have five minutes there, 10 minutes there, our phones now track the total time spent. And it's probably it can really be, bad. It can be fairly embarrassing to get a reminder from your phone that you spent three and a half hours on average daily on these three apps. Oh, I thought you were going to say <clears throat> just TikTok. No, on these three different okay. social sites. I know you like the, the ticky talkies. Yeah, I mean, and it's... It's a bad habit. Yeah. And if you're not on TikTok, you probably don't want to get on it because <laughs> it is a great, you know, time suck. But, you know, I'm committed right now to making sure that that is just a business platform right. to push to push out things that could help other right. people and that I'm not going to be sucked into it anymore. Yeah. You know, and it's just one of those things. It's like, yeah, I enjoyed it for a little while, but now I've, I've got to get refocused. Right. Well, I mean, I had a conversation with someone the other day and she said, so when you were getting started, you cut things out of your life so you could save money like Netflix. And I said, yes, we cut Netflix, but it wasn't the $10 a month. That was the issue. Right. It was the two, three hours a day. That was the issue. So we canceled our Netflix subscription. We we, could afford it. Right. But we couldn't afford to spend the time doing it. And it got to where we realized we just weren't watching. So why are we spending 10 bucks a month on this when? Yeah. We're not using it because we were just so focused and filling that time with education. Right. And I know we all need downtime at the end of the day. We can't go 24 hours a day, hardcore working. So we, we found strategic ways mm-hmm. to get rest. Right. And scrolling through social media a lot of times can produce stress hormones in us that counteract what you're trying to do. Right. It makes you more stressed out because you're looking at, Comparing yourself to other people or you see hateful things from political posts and right. things that just get you fired up. That's not giving you rest. Mm-hmm. So pick the things that do bring you true rest. And I know for me, a bubble bath, that's how I like to wind down my day. It just resets my mind and gives me a minute to just take a minute. Yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> Just finding ways to be strategic in your rest time and making sure that you're actually resting instead of doing things that are going to make you more stressed out. Yeah. And, you know, along with rest, I mean, obviously sleeping is resting. But, you know, in order to fit more things into your day, you know, do you think it's wise for people to, you know, instead of saying I have to sleep nine, ten hours a night, you know, I'm going to sleep six and a half hours tonight for the next five days so that I can get up an hour early and go to bed an hour later each day. Cause maybe you have a family and you have kids and you don't want to lose out on that family time during, you know, work ended and bedtime. So your sacrifice for time might look like I'm staying up an extra hour at night and I'm waking up an extra hour early the next day. That way those two hours, if you spent two hours a day listening to a podcast, or listening to an audiobook or reading a book or watching a rerun of a webinar of of some other uh teacher or taking an online class and that's when you're doing your class those 2 hours that's 10 hours a week most audiobooks are on average you know 4 to 8 hours you can do a book a week right and change your life well and it's i think we underestimate the value of small daily action um, I am right now I'm reading Gary Keller's book on millionaire real estate investor. 
And he uses an example of three people. They all weigh the same. They're exactly the same person. Mm -hmm. One of them makes no changes. One cuts, I think it was 100 or 150 calories a day from his diet and walks a little bit more. And the other guy starts becoming a foodie, gets on Food Network, starts cooking really delicious, cheesy, creamy meals and Mm. takes in an extra 150 calories. And he shows the progression of those three people. And the guy who cut the calories loses weight significantly over the long term. Because on on a grand scale, yeah, 150 calories a day is not a big deal. But over five years, that adds up. How many calories is a pound? 3,500. So how many days collectively is 30, from 150 into 3,500? 23. So it's Com- a pound a month. Computing. Call computing. it. Computing. Call so, it a pound a month. Yeah. So over 12 months, that's 12 pounds. Right. And for someone that weighs, let's say, 200 pounds, going from 200 down to 188 that's a significant difference. Right. You know, that's, that's big. But when you're talking about, oh, it's half a pound every two weeks, or I'm only losing a quarter pound a week, you know, it's, it's hard to rationalize and say, is it worth it? it? Is it worth it? But if you could say, oh, in five years, I lost 60 pounds. Right. In five years, I lost 60 pounds, and I probably added five years to my life. Right. Well, and Gary talks in the book about how the guy who takes on the unhealthy diet starts sleeping worse because he's, you know, not eating well. Right. And then he decides to start watching TV at night because he's unhappy with his physical body and how he feels. And then he starts ignoring his wife, and it it cascades into a, like, major <laughs> it way. It snowballs negatively. Yes. <laughs> and that... that it's a good il- illustration. It may not be super realistic, but I think it, it does apply. And it's the compounding of s- small daily action has a profound impact on your life. Now, I hate to like jump script here, but here we go. you know, it, it, in the army, we do master resiliency training. And one of the master resiliency training uh, components is avoiding thinking traps. And uh, with avoiding thinking traps, um, one uh, to use, just like you said, you know, you're eating more, so you feel more unhealthy. So you need something to give you those endorphins to feel good. So you watch more TV and now you're staying up late and because you're staying up later, now you're hungrier. And so you're eating more even in the evenings. And then, you know, you get into not just the thinking trap, but you get into a habitual trap of, well, this is what brings me joy. This is what brings me happiness. And so you end up spiraling out of control. And thinking traps are the, the idea of the army saying, avoid spiraling out right. of control with your thinking because they want soldiers to have, you know, good mental health. So they say, you know, don't go to take a PT test and say, well, there's no way I can pass this PT test because I haven't run in two, in two months. And then because you got into that thinking trap, now you're saying, well, there's no way I can pass this. So there's no reason to even show up to formation. I'm not going to show up to formation. Now you're AWOL. And there's no reason to even care about that. And then you end up spiraling so far out of control that you've gotten kicked out of the army and now you can't find a job in the civilian world. And that you the can easily is, spiral yeah, out of control. It's, it's a snowball. Mm-hmm. Like small actions make the snowball snowball get a little bit bigger and over time those habits really have an impact on the giant snowball it's the domino effect as well right you know that one small action of a tiny little domino you know you give it time and patience and energy that little domino is going to knock over one that's 50 percent larger right and then ultimately you're knocking over something that's as big as the distance between the earth and the moon right so don't don't get into a thinking trap or a negative snowball, uh, you know, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's just making a decision on what strategy works for you and your life. When we were starting out, we were newly dating and married, and we were both fully committed, and we didn't have kids. So our situation was very different from where it is for us now mm-hmm. with a kid and one on the way. And if we, let's say we started today, like we just found real estate investing right now. Yeah. You know, you're six months pregnant. We have a year and a half year old. So we have three months till baby. Right. Our son goes to bed at seven every night, Mm -hmm. give or take. Yeah. So 
we could work for a couple hours in the evening. You like to stay up late, so you would probably stay up later. Yeah. I would and watch then, I'd watch webinars. Yeah. Um you would be on Cashflow Depot, would be my bet. That's right. I'd be listening to a lot of Jack Miller and, and a lot of Carlton Sheets and just the old school teachers yeah. of the, you know, the, the Tampa Six Pack. And I would be listening. Right. And gaining knowledge. <clears throat> and I would be, still be working. Right. So I'd still be working. And um, on my way to work, I would listen to a podcast or I would be yeah. sifting through audiobooks. And in between class changes, I would probably be doing the same thing. Right. And then... You know, during the summers or during the evenings, we would find a deal and we would still be going to the real estate meetups. Yeah. Um, we would still do the same things we did. It would take longer. Right. It would because I wouldn't be able to dedicate four to six hours, you know, from 8, 9 p.m. till 2 a.m. anymore because, <clears throat> you know, I just wouldn't have that freedom because we'd have kids. But what I would do is, I would put those two to three hours in a day. Right. So the rehabs would take a little longer, but the result would be the same. Right. So instead of making it in three and a half years, it might have taken us six or seven years. Right. But I guarantee guarantee you we would have still made it. Right. Right. We would still make it because our why would be big enough. Right. With nursing coming up in my future, that is a full-time job in itself. So having a toddler, nursing, and running our business, I'm going to have three jobs in essence. Mm-hmm. But while you're nursing, there's an opportunity instead of going on Amazon and buying random things that I don't need or getting on Facebook, I can, I can read a book. I mean, I've in the morning we wake up with our son. He drinks his milk. We share a little uh, coffee cake while I drink my coffee. And I've been reading Gary Keller's book on my phone. And it's, 15, 20 minutes at a clip, but that 10, 15, 20 minutes gets me 15 minutes further into that book. Right. And it, it gets my brain thinking. So then once we're done watching our little TV show, having our morning <clears throat> session, I'm still processing that throughout the day. Right. So it's, it's just small daily action. That's, That's really right. all it is. Mm-hmm. And it seems so little, but it has such a profound impact. Yeah. <clears throat> so how can we advise our listeners to picking a strategy? You know, what can they take from this episode and apply it? Yeah, I think one thing is tracking your time. And whether that's taking pen and paper, a spreadsheet, however you want to do it, really analyze how you're spending your time. And I think if you're not interested in doing that, because I know that takes a lot of effort, look at your phone and see... <laughs> Where you're, how you're spending screen time. Get embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. It's, and we're pretty diligent and it's still embarrassing how we oh, yeah. spend time on our phones. Absolutely. <laughs> so me, me in particular. Oh, I am too though. I, I, well, you play that little stacking Jenga yeah. block game. And I just look at people like renovating backyards and grass cutting videos. You could Pressure get washing. lost pressure washing video you can get lost in tiktok watching the grass cutting the pressure washing the truck rehabs that's that's where i'm at yeah. <laughs> enjoy it and we just shared so my uh tiktok we just shared it with our uh, admin and uh i said hey when you get on tiktok don't uh don't go through the fyp page because all you're gonna see is a bunch of pressure washing and grass cutting because <laughs> it's built for my algorithm so don't uh don't go on there and expect to see what you want to see. And she's like, really funny. I'm just there to make the videos. I'm like, yeah. Okay, well, she let's keep it that way. <laughs> she has the same mindset as I do. Is we both know we're gonna get sucked into it. Yeah. And I just I downloaded it and I, my mom and I were looking through some videos yesterday of a dachshund. Over, oh, did y'all look yeah, at it? There's a toddler talking, like a four year old, oh. and a dachshund mouthing and. We spent like 15 minutes just standing in the living room flipping through videos. And I'm like, this is why I don't but get on there. They're fantastic, aren't they? Yeah. They're but entertaining. That was 15 minutes of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> yeah. So what you just said, time that you'll never get back. Right. That's, that's one thing most people on their deathbed say is, you know, I wish I had more time. Right. But if you could be intentional, hyper intentional about your time and be very, you know, on purpose. <laughs> with how you're spending your days um 
you can better prepare yourself for old age to be able to say, I was intentional. Right. I maximized it. And yes, I rested. Yes, I I did stuff that wasted time, but I I needed that, you know, to, right. to keep healthy balance. Right. And but you don't want to get to the end of your life and say, I wish I had been more intentional with my time so that right. I was, you know, more I don't know involved with yeah. with family or right. or with with friends and colleagues. You know, by creating this time tracker, you know, I would just I would just implore everyone to just journal for one week. And at the end of each day, you know, go through and say, from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., I woke up, I, I watched the news for 35 minutes before I left for work. Um, what if you didn't watch the news for 35 minutes and you journaled for 35 minutes, right? Or what if you didn't watch the news for 35 minutes and you listened to a podcast? Most of our podcasts are between 30 and 45 minutes long. So maybe you could share our podcast with someone and they would find benefit in it or someone else's podcast, anyone that will get them to think about intentionality. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, from eight until four was the work day, but get nitty gritty about it. You know, you didn't work eight to four. There's going to be downtime in your work day um, for most people. I know there are probably people out there It's like, I'm a deep sea underwater welder and I was under the water wow. for 12 hours. I didn't have downtime. And I know that's probably <laughs> a very strange example, but there are people that do that. You know, they're yeah. welding underwater and stuff like that. But for the most part, people have downtime at work and they probably come in 10 to 20 minute increments. Right. What can you do in those 10 to 20 minutes? You can run a deal right. in 10 to 20 minutes. Yep. Or you can at least identify a property. Right. Um, you can you can read a blog post in ten to twenty minutes. You can scour the internet for well, seminars. And even as bad as TikTok can be as a time suck, you can follow people that provide tips that will help you get further. Yeah, and hopefully by the time this uh, podcast airs, we have a lot of content on our page, yeah. on our TikTok page, where you can go watch you know thirty second videos right. of different little teaching moments. Yeah. So, I mean, that's on purpose investor uh, on TikTok. Yep. Um, yeah. So something else you can do that we have really been trying to do of late is outsourcing more. Mm -hmm. um, we found a laundry service that we can put a bag of dirty clothes on the front porch and they will pick it up and bring it back with all folded and clean. And just all I have to do is put it in the drawers. Right. And it's it's a cost. I mean, it's something we have to pay for. But when things are very stressful at home and we just don't have time to get the laundry done. And it's for me, one of my core values is having an organized home. So that makes me more productive and able to focus on our podcast and our book and everything else we had going on. Right. So paying that money was worth it. Yeah. So we have tried to outsource as much things and that's going back to it's things that are below my hourly rate. So things that I can spend my time generating more income for our family or, or mm -hmm. just value in, I get to spit, sit and spend time with our son. Right. The value to me is worth it to spend the money to outsource that thing. No, absolutely. And I mean, other outsourcing things are, <clears throat> you know, hiring an admin yeah. with an on-purpose investor or hiring a manager within our rental business. Right. You know, obviously we're sacrificing money and income right. by doing that. But what are we gaining from it? We're right. gaining the time, time. time freedom. And today's episode is all about time. Right. Well, and it's... Right. Yeah, we're in essence buying time so that we can invest in this business right? to help others. So I, I know I'm like overarching from the middle of what we're talking about with the strategies, but the three different strategies you, for you is find time by tracking time and figuring out where you can get it, you know, buying time, and that is outsourcing, and then creating time. Yep. So you find time by tracking and figure out where you can fit it in, right? You buy time by outsourcing and finding different things that are taking, you know, 30, 45 minutes or an hour um, and you're outsourcing it. And the last one is going to be creating time. Now, how do you create time? You can't just make time, but how do you create it? And my idea of creating time is by sacrificing. You're going to get rid of something that you were spending time on. 
and it can be it can be anything. Now there are certain things that you cannot sacrifice, like your job. You need your income. But, you know, in the Pathfinder's journey, we saw that Dan sacrificed and bought he he sacrificed something to get time. He gave up his weekly poker night to have time. He sold his season tickets to the Braves to have time. You know, during baseball season, I mean, that's 15, 10 to 15 days a month where he's probably spending four to six hours at the ball field. But he sacrificed. He got rid of those things to have more time. Right. What can you do um, to sacrifice to get more time? Maybe it's, maybe it's putting your Xbox or PlayStation in the closet. You know, unhooking it from the TV. That might be the 45 minutes to an hour yeah. that you need. Well, or you could play for 20 minutes and then save the 40 minutes mm-hmm. to do something else. Yeah. You don't have to cut everything 100%. Right. But just the small action and giving yourself time to invest in yourself and your dream life because your dream life is worth it. That's right. It is. And, you know, in order to figure out what your dream life is, make sure you go check out, you know, all of those exercises we talked about in the first 20 something episodes about. Figuring out how to get to your dream life, right. figuring out what it looks like, how to dream it up, and all the steps it takes to get there. Um, you know, but you know, I, I, I implore you as a listener, um, list out the things that you could sacrifice to make time, right? Or creating time. Right. Yeah. Right. So, those three things, those are some big takeaways. Yeah. I, I encourage everyone to go do it. How can you find time? How can you buy time? How can you create time? Yeah. I encourage you. Go do it. Thanks, y'all, for hanging out with us and listening to us talk about how you can find more time to start or grow your business. What lessons can you take from our experience and apply to your life? Don't let the time you just invested go to waste. You only get one life, so live it purposely. That's all we have for you today. See you next time. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Head over to onpurposeinvestor.com and sign up for our newsletter to get all the latest updates. If you haven't already, we'd really appreciate an honest review wherever you watch our podcast. All right, now go smash that subscribe and follow button for more tips on building your dream life. See you next week, Pathfinders.